Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Protest at PNP headquarters as the dismiss unit. deepen. Political parties say they aren't worried about the latest party standings poll results. And listen, MVP opens up about the future of Triple Olympic champion Elaine Thompson Hero. I'm Anthony Lug. Here are the details. Up first this afternoon, controversial People's National Party activist Karen Cross says party president Mark Golding must go. This morning, Ms. Cross led a protest at the PNP headquarters in St. Andrew where she accused Mr. Golding of failing to address the disunity in the party. Our reporter Sandy Williams filed this report. Upon arriving at the PNP headquarters on Old Hope Road in St. Andrew, a handful of supporters were seen protesting at the main gate. Though the gate was locked, that did not stop the protesters from voicing their concern. PNP activist Karen Cross, who spearheaded the protest, wants party leader Mark Golding and General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell to resign. We want the resignation of Mark Golding and Dayton Campbell. There's no two way about that. Them, them not able to bring it together. No, no, there's no effort that they have made to bring it together. There is no record to show that they have made a very honest and humble and truthful and trustworthy effort to unite the party. The PMP has been battling this unity for some time now, and Ms. Cross says the party leader is yet to make an attempt to resolve the matter. In fact, she accused Mr. Golding of attempting to oust several members of the party. He has set himself up in a way that he will continue to divide. Let me give you a classic example. This morning before I left out of my house, I got a text message on my phone, which is a statement from Comrade McCarthy down in Region 5, the Region 5 chairman, saying that he's withdrawing his, his, um, his intent to offer himself again for Region 5 chairman because he's up against a well-funded campaign by the leadership of the PMP for current Spencer to unseat him. And that are the, those are the kind of things we're talking about. But the party's general secretary, Dr. Dayton Campbell, says Ms. Cross's claim is not true. No such thing. It is, it is completely opposite to the truth. Completely opposite to the truth. Mark Golin came to the leadership of the party. He, has, he cannot change the members of parliament. So those persons are still there. He cannot change the senators. One resigned and he made one appointment. One. So who would he have ousted? While it may take some time for unity to be restored inside the party, it may take longer among supporters. Mark Golin is irrelevant. He's an imbecile. He looks him so like um, Pinochet. I'm going to call police by you. Don't stand up beside me. Um, I come to say about my minister, Mark Golden. He is doing a good job. What the PNP needs to do, stop the fight I never knew the PNP do what and stop fight against whosoever the people put in the seat for around the country. Reporting from the PNP headquarters in St. Andrew, I'm Sandy Williams for TVJ News. To other news now, the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, has warned that countries in the region could continue to face localized COVID-19 outbreaks well into 2022. This is even while deaths have fallen from their peak in January. Shamela Pullen reports. In an update to its 59th Directing Council meeting of health ministers, the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, on Wednesday said the course of the COVID-19 pandemic in the Americas remains highly uncertain. Latin America and the Caribbean have had more COVID fatalities than Asia and Africa combined. Amidst the unrelenting and tragic march of the global COVID-19 pandemic, which as of Friday, the 17th of September, had claimed more than 2.16 million lives in the region of the Americas, with 87.6 million cases having been recorded. The mind struggles to comprehend the sheer enormity of these statistics. PAHO's director, Dr. Carissa Etienne, says surges in cases in the first half of 2021, coupled with vaccine hesitancy and shortages, continue to pose a challenge to halt in the spread of COVID-19 in the region. Our inability to readily source and procure personal protective equipment 
ventilators, vaccines, oxygen, medicines such as antiretrovirus, and other essential health technologies heighten our vulnerabilities and severely compromise our pandemic response. However, this alarming circumstance has galvanized us into recognizing the obligatory need for regional self-sufficiency in health technologies. PAHO recently launched a platform to boost regional vaccine efforts. The world body has recently gotten the support from the World Bank and the IDB to invest in this venture. I want to urge us all to invest in our health systems and swiftly ensure their transformation so they have the capacity to respond to the needs of all people every day and to better respond to pandemics and other disasters when they do occur. Shimela Pullen, TVJ News. In the meantime, the country recorded 435 new COVID-19 cases within the last 24 hours. The country's overall case count now stands at 81,394. The positivity rate has increased to 31.2% from 27.6% on Tuesday. 670 people have been hospitalized with COVID-19. 50 of the patients are critically ill, while 97 are severely ill. There are 27,480 active cases on the island. Meanwhile, six more people have died from COVID-19, pushing the death toll to 1,809. To other news now, a former gangster turned state witness continued to outline one of the murders committed by alleged members of the Wandan gang in November 2017. The witness, who is giving evidence via video link, told the court that the alleged gang leader, Andre Blackman Bryan, went to see one of the victims before he was killed in Larston, St. Catherine. The witness said he drove Mr. Bryan to the location minutes before the hit was carried out. The witness also testified that Mr. Bryan was elated when he heard the gunfire. The witness is now providing details on a third murder at the trial of the 33 alleged members of the one Don of the one Don gang continues in the Home Circuit Court. And it's now time for a break, but stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to Midday News and thanks for staying with us. It's official. 211 is the number to call to report any incident of child abuse or neglect. Krista Campbell attended Wednesday's virtual launch. 211 now officially replaces 188 Protect, which had been used for the past 10 years as the toll free helpline to report cases of child abuse. The authorities say they found that three digits are much easier for especially younger children to remember if they need to call for help. And since June this year, the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, says there's been a steady increase of over 1,200 reports of child abuse and neglect every month. Overall, 5,796 cases since the start of this year. State Minister for Youth Robert Morgan notes that because child abuse happens at all hours, the 211 helpline will be manned throughout the day. So it is important that children have a quick access to a number which can, they can use as close to the incident of abuse as possible. Because the longer a child takes to report an abuse, in some cases it's, the hard, it's, it's harder for the child to report it or to relive the experience by talking about it. CPFSA CEO Rosalie Gage Gray says the helpline has been operational since June this year and specially trained officers have been assigned to take calls in every parish. She says they, as well as social workers, are on call at all hours and they work with the police when there are emergency situations. A child would call on the line or would send us a message and we have an officer who would be speaking to that child whilst another is trying to get to the location. So we usually, in those cases, um, especially if a child is suicidal. 
Child psychologist Dr. Kai Morgan says the helpline will be vital in addressing the emotional impact of child abuse. She notes that many abused or neglected children have learning issues because of the trauma they suffered. They are more vulnerable and at risk for things like depression, for things like substance abuse, right? So including um, alcohol, smoking, they're more likely, they're many times more likely to, to smoke, to drink alcohol, to have depression to have also physical health problems when they get older, right? So I'm talking about things like, um, like hypertension, right? And there have been very clear studies that show the, re the response between heart disease, right? Pulmonary disease, depression, cancer even, right? And higher rates in, in, in people that have a history of trauma. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. Several customers along the Helsha Beach in Portmore St. Catherine remain without water this afternoon following an operation by the National Water Commission yesterday. It was revealed that the customers owe the company millions. More in this report. From 11 a.m., our news team got word that a team from the National Water Commission were removing illegal connections along Helsha Beach. Upon arrival, the operators barred our news team from entering to capture the proceedings, but we were not deterred. As we stood outside the gates, we obtained images captured by eyewitnesses as the NWC team removed the illegal connections. Our news team caught up with the community relations manager for the Eastern Division, Delano Williams, just outside the property. Some of them have tapped into the, the service mains inside the meter banks themselves. Uh, so far, we have identified 10 in about the first two hours of our operation, and our work will continue um, along the network to correct any of those situations that we come across. NWC has been on a drive to reduce non-revenue water in the parish. And though the project has not been completed, the company has been engaging delinquent customers. At the Helsha Beach, however, it appears that despite the dialogue, some customers are not taking heed. But just how much are customers along the beach owing? In terms of the overall outstanding balances, we're looking at approximately 8.5 million in terms of um, the overall that includes active and inactive customer base. 32 active customers with a balance of 1.5 or thereabout. And the larger balance of inactive customers um, running close to 6 million uh, in terms of outstanding balances. Earlier this year, the NWC indicated that it will be targeting eight communities in Portmore St. Catherine in a five-year anti-water theft project. It's early days yet, but Mr. Williams says the company is making strides. Reactions this afternoon from the two main political parties to the latest RJR Gleaner Don Anderson poll results on voter intention. The data show that the Jamaica Labour Party is leading the People's National Party. The matter was discussed on TVJ's All Angles last night. Shane Masters reports. The two major political parties say they are not worried about the results of the latest R.J. Aguilina Don Anderson poll. Jamaicans were asked, if elections were called today, who would you vote for? 26% of the respondents said the Jamaica Labour Party, while 17% said the People's National Party. That's a 9 percentage points lead for the JLP. General Secretary of the PNP, Dr. Dane Campbell, believes the poll is a reflection of the grounds the party needs to cover. And so what we have to do is to see how we can become appealing to those persons again that, so that we can have them coming out um, to be participants in the process. He added that the party's focus now is to ensure it remains responsive to the concerns of the public. I think a critical part of it is about what we are about and where we are going, which is why we are putting a lot of focus on the policy and vision in commission so we can clearly enunciate to the people of this country what it is that a PNP administration is about, what are our policies in the different areas and people can connect with those. Chairman of the JLP's Public Relations Committee, Matthew Samuda, is also reacting to the latest numbers. I'm pleasantly surprised at how well we're, we're doing in this space. The, the 42% positivity rating of leader of the party, the, the performance rating of the government, taking the tough decisions that we've had to take. When you consider the non-clinical measures that go along with COVID that have ravaged governments right across the, the, the globe, 
to be in the space that we are, um, we're not going to take it for granted. We're actually quite, quite happy. The poll also showed that 57% of respondents either would not vote or were not sure who they would vote for. Political commentator Nadine Spence believes both political parties are unattractive to young people. Both parties do very little to engage voters, the new voter, the non-traditional voter. And I don't see um, and this, this, this interest in getting a younger generation enrolled in the parties and becoming interested in, 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 in the party politics and wanting to participate, wanting to be, vote, wanting to be voters. Another political commentator, Chris Stokes, says the disunity in the PNP will affect the party greatly if something is not done about it. How does the, the PNP position itself? Is it uh, efficiency? That's, that's a difficult sell. And so time needs to, they need to spend some time on that. The first thing, though, is leadership and bringing the party together. Otherwise, as has been happening, it will rip itself apart from the inside. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. We go now to a look at the top regional and international stories. Here's the U.S. Special Envoy for Haiti has resigned in protest over the deportation of Asian migrants. In his resignation letter, Daniel Foote said the U.S. decision to deport the immigrants was inhumane. Mr. Foote said the U.S. approach to Haiti was deeply flawed and that his advice had been ignored. He said Haiti is racked with poverty, crime, government corruption and a lack of humanitarian resources. Further overseas, Pfizer's booster has gotten the FDA's emergency use authorization. And today, a CDC panel will decide whether to recommend it, then the CDC director signs off. The booster is targeted at people 65 and over, those at risk of severe disease and people at risk because of their jobs, like healthcare workers, teachers and grocery workers. The CDC is expected to fine-tune recommendations on how boosters should be given. And that's it for the top regional and international stores. I'm Machine Masters. And we head now to a quick break. When we return, we'll have your midday sports report. Simon Preston is standing by. Simon, good afternoon. Welcome back. It's now time for midday sports. I'm Simon Preston. Veteran coach of the MVP track club Stephen Francis is remaining coy about the future of triple Olympic champion and the fastest woman alive over the 100 and 200 meters Elaine Thompson hero with the club. When contacted by the RJ Glina group on Thursday morning about the letter sent by Thompson hero about her intention to leave the club, Francis was evasive. From my perspective, we have we start back practice on sometime October 18th, 19th, just after Heroes Day. I think Heroes Heroes Week, um, and uh, my philosophy is usually to to see who turns up. Quizzed as whether he was confident she'll be back at the club in mid October. Francis gave the clearest indication that the sprinter may not return to the club where she started out since 2014. I am never confident about that because uh, what I, my experience tells me that athletes in general, especially those who come from a low expectation level, in other words, not much was expected of them all the while they are usually unable to separate themselves from the people who hop onto their, their, bandwagon, their various bandwagons. You know, people, they, 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 they tend to have short memories and they, they tend to, to listen to people who they just meet or they, they, who, who um, gather around them um, since they have become famous or successful. Jamaican and Caribbean number one Chris Binney has risen one place to 76th in the world in the Men's Squash Federation rankings. Despite a first-round exit in the Egyptian Open earlier this month, Binney's rise comes after making it to the semi-finals of the Atlanta Open last month. The 32-year-old is also ninth in the Americas region. 
And finally, this afternoon, reggae boy Kemar Roof scored for Rangers FC as they blanked Livingston 2-0 in the quarterfinals of the Scottish League Cup at the Ibrox Stadium on Wednesday. The 28-year-old scored, scored the opener for Rangers in the 48th minute. This was Roof's fifth goal in his sixth appearance in all competitions this season. Roof and Rangers are the defending champions of the Scottish Premier League. Roof made his debut for Jamaica in a 3-0 loss to Panama in the 2022 two CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers earlier this month. And that is it for your Midday Sports Report. I'm Simon Preston. Anthony, it is over to you. All right. Thank you very much, Simon. And just before we go, here's a look at the latest in the business world. The Ministry of Agriculture has allocated $100 million to help farmers purchase fertilizer amid a spike in the price of the commodity. Agriculture Minister Audley Shaw says the fertilizer will be sold at a 15% discount. This price reduction will be applied at the point of purchase to registered farmers island-wide for a period effective October 1 to December 31st or until the $100 million is exhausted. And in business internationally, Target is cutting back on hiring seasonal workers this holiday season and instead giving its current workers more hours. As it gears up for a rush of shoppers at stores and on its website, workers could see 5 million more hours, which translate into more than 75 million US dollars of additional pay. Target still plans to hire about 100,000 seasonal employees. However, that's smaller than the over 130,000 that it hired for the past two holiday seasons. And that's, and that's the Midday News. I'm Anthony Log. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.